And next I need a switch that can handle like a hundred volts and eh, 10 amps at least. Alright. Uh, somewhere in here I've got some chunks of copper. Hey, copper? Yeah, that's it. This is all copper chunks. Good thing I have this or I'd be looking for old pennies. Alright. Lots of little bits of copper. Plain old knife switch should last a while. It won't have soft start or speed control or any fanciness, but should be sufficient for a test drive. Alright, I hope I can cut this by hand. That would be quite convenient. Oh, nice. I totally can. Alright. So if I cut a couple strips, those can be the knifey things. And then I'm going to have to do something for the things they touch. If anyone doesn't know what a knife switch is, it'll be apparent any minute now. Hey dude, wasn't your drill press broken? Yeah, and some guy from online sent me a new part for it. Totally cool, eh? Also, a couple weeks ago, I got an envelope in the mail from somewhere uh, with no name on it. It just said, Giant Robot Project. And inside was five bucks. I don't even know who sent it, but thanks. That's really awesome. Actually, this whole project's been funded almost completely by people either donating money on my website or sending me stuff, like someone sent me this 8th inch copper stuff which I'm now using to make a switch. Totally wouldn't have gotten all this done without tons of help from people I don't know. It's pretty sweet. There's a piece of a switch. And I'm thinking I can put a little bolt here with a wire attached. That's how the electricity will get into this part. Wait a second, I should put a couple of those in there, yeah. Boop. Good enough. Come on, make a muscle! Do it! to get this loosened up because my servos from my radio control has to be able to move it easily. A little bit stiff. <laughs> stiff. I had some fancy ideas, but I think I'm just going to put these contacts here like this, so it just presses up against them. Hmm. I think I want that a little higher. With this type of switch, you need a bit of pressure to keep uh, good contact. Which is good, because if there's any errors in my servos lose power, I want it to lose contact. So I want it to be harder to get good contact than it is to lose it. So this way I'll just have to set the servos to try to push a little bit further than contact so it applies pressure. This should be good. I'm not gonna mount the servo over here somewhere. <laughs> 
I should probably put a screw through here too and not just rely on the fancy glue. It's funny, with most things I build, I'm trying to make little tiny switches and electronics inside the thing, but this robot's so huge, I mean, this switch can be pretty much as big as I want. Okay, I just went into the house and stole some parts. This from my 3D printed big robot and the receiver and stuff, which I happened to attach just by clips. Oh, that was so smart I did that. I'm so happy I did that. Because I just unclipped it and the whole thing came off and I can put it back on and whatever. And now I've got, yeah, a thing that can control some stuff. Except this can control smaller stuff, not the big motor, which is obviously why I made the big switch. And then I stole this switch and this servo and another one in my pocket from a dog. This big steel dog I made like, I don't know, 20 years ago or something. Oh, and I totally need batteries. I'm probably gonna have to go out and get them. Wait a second. This runs off eight double A's. That's 12 volts. I have 12 volts in here. I can just clip some thingies on. Blah, blah, blah. And my receiver does have batteries in it. Yeah. Oh, I'm having technical difficulties. See if I can figure out what's wrong with this thing. It doesn't work. Maybe there's something I can fix inside it. Ah, I couldn't find anything visibly wrong, but it is just not working. The servers are receiving signal, but they're just going blah, 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 blah. Here, like this. Yeah. Yeah, not really what they're supposed to do. I do have another transmitter. Terrible timing. Last time I killed one of those was like 20 years ago. Let's see if this thing actually charges. It's mighty old. Guess I can still mount my servo before I know how far it's going to push. Somewhere around there. Alright, let's check on this. Oh, sweet! Charging, nice! I think I can make it like a clippy thing to kind of hold that on there. Like that. Alright, if I get that on there, I should be able to bloop bloop to get it out. Might have to file it a little thinner so it bends though. Ah, oh, that's a little bit crude, but it should work good. Crossing fingers! Excellent! Oh, I have to adjust that a little bit. Yeah, right there. Cool. Okay, now I just have to connect one of these to the positive and the other one to the negative. And then these to the to the main motor, and then cross the wires from there over to these ones, so it can go reverse or forward. Piece of cake. Now I wonder if these switches are strong enough to uh, oops to power the steering. The steering has a much smaller motor. It's only 12 volts too. Oh, brains!